Good morning. I hope that your weekend's starting out well. I'm thankful that you were able to join me this morning. Today we're going to be looking at Psalm 57 as we spend this little bit of time together reflecting and praying. Now Psalm 57 comes at a very interesting time in David's life. That's right. It's a psalm of David, a psalm that David wrote one of the many psalms, if you'll notice, there's this progression in the psalms of David that we've been reading lately that talk about that period in his life where he's fleeing from Saul. Well, this is in that progression. And it's a psalm that titles itself, When He Had Fled From Saul Into the Cave. Now, there's two different times when that could actually be. If you, are, if you go back to 1 Samuel, you'll see that in 22, David is alone and he's hiding from Saul in a cave. And then in 24, he and his men are hiding in a cave from Saul. Now, I think that this is the one in 24, not the one in 22. And the reason for that is there is another psalm, uh, Psalm 142, where David also is hiding in a cave. And that psalm sounds a lot more like the Psalm 22, the, the 1 Samuel 22 one, because he seems much more alone in that one. And this one has kind of a happy ending. So anyways, you kind of, it takes a little bit of time and it's a little bit of fun to explore these things, but it's once again just fantastic to see David's life laid out before us. And it's not just fantastic from a nerdy perspective, it's fantastic because it reminds us that this was a real man who prayed these prayers as he went through hard times. It's fantastic because I need to be reminded that I should document my thoughts. I need to think about what I'm feeling. I need to remember and even write down those times that I've cried out to God, trusting that he will respond, hoping that he will respond. Do any of you do that? How many of you keep a diary or a journal or a prayer journal? I know I write down prayer requests, but I tend to never go back and uh, write down how it turned out. Or very, very rarely do I write down very much that's personal in my own heart. Uh, that tends to be something that I mull over in quiet times more than something that gets written down. So, I don't know. Do any of you keep a prayer journal? Do you like it? How good are you at doing it? Do you do it every day? Love to hear some of those thoughts. But this is what David did, and it's not just a prayer journal in this case. Here's a man who loves God and is inspired by the Holy Spirit to take his, his experiences and his prayers and put them on the page so that we can draw near to him, so that we can, through him, see God at work. So, let's do that now. Let's take a look at Psalm 57 together. Psalm 57, for the director of music, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, of David, when he had fled from Saul into the cave. Have mercy on me, O God, have mercy on me, for it is you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster is past. I cry out to the mo God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. Selah. God sends his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I lie among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, among above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. Selah. My heart is steadfast, O God, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake my soul, awake my harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples, for great is your love reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness stretches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So as you can tell, this is a triumph triumphant psalm. This is a psalm of praise, a psalm of victory, and that fits very well with the story in 1 Samuel 24. Because in 1 Samuel 24, we see David is hiding in a cave, and Saul, the very one who's chasing after him, has wandered into the cave alone to go to the bathroom. 
So David's men, they look, they're looking in the cave. There's kind of this play. They go, David, look who's coming into the cave. This is surely God's plan for you to kill him and get the victory. But David doesn't kill Saul. David sneaks down and he cuts the corner off of Saul's cloak with what must have been a very sharp knife while Saul is doing his business. So then Saul goes out and then David climbs up out of the way to some place where he can talk to Saul without worrying about Saul killing him. And he says, hey, Saul, look at this. I've got your robe. I could have killed you just a few minutes ago, but I didn't. And Saul is convicted by the Holy Spirit, and he says, I am so sorry. I shouldn't be chasing you. You're a better man than me. You will one day be king. And it's just a beautiful chapter. And we see this turnaround here that, that we see in the psalm. We see David saying, behold, I'm hiding in a cave. But even though I'm in a cave, my shield isn't the cave. My shield isn't a really good hiding spot. It's God who is my wing and my refuge and my shelter. And it says he's God who sends help because I am surrounded by lions. And you get this sense as well. That when David went out and did that, when he hears Saul with his army at his back, they are as close to finding David as they ever could be. And David is brave enough not only to go forward and just cut the guy's robe off, which is stupid brave, but then also afterwards while the army is still there, to say, look what I found. We don't know if David had some hope we did, probably did have some back escape route for his men because they, they were facing certain death. They were surrounded by the ravenous army of Saul. But they fall and fall. Saul falls into the very pit that they had dug. And it all turns away. It's turned in on themselves. And so the, the whole chase ends. David, who's exhausted, who's been running from Saul, suddenly finds himself able to go away from Saul, but not feel chased. So he goes with his men back to the heights. And then we get the rest of the psalm. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. There's just this beautiful proclamation of God. He says, I can't wait to get up before the sun rises i will be out there singing proclaiming the beauty of god he places himself with the birds that sing the pre-dawn song proclaiming god's beauty and then he says not only that i will praise you among the nations i will sing of you to all the peoples because you are to be exalted above the heavens and the earth in the end the amazing thing about david in this story is that in the beginning of this psalm he roots himself not in his strength not in his refuge only in God's protection for him. He says, this is the shield that will last. And then we see him cry out to God, and sorry, and we see him in his distress. See, uh, he doesn't say, look at how brave I was either, does he? He says, look at what God did. God took their net and he turned it on them. And uh, we're all supposed to know the story, but we also know how David sees it. David sees the Holy Spirit at work through him to, uh, to bring about a happy ending for him and his men. So how do we, what do we get out of this? We get, um, well, just every one of these beautiful stories reflects the beauty of God for us. God's promises to us, the refuge that we have in Christ as our shield and as our champion. Jesus is our anointed one and our intercessor. Is he your refuge today, or is he just somebody that you think of every once in a while? David was willing to say that in the midst of everything else that he could have relied on, his 400 men, a good hiding spot, his own courage, his own sword to stab Saul in the back and kill him, David instead says, my refuge is the Lord. And if my refuge is the Lord, then I... What's more important to me than ending, getting my own revenge or ending my enemy? My, what's most important to me is honoring God. And so David makes this startling decision not to kill Saul, not to capture Saul, not to threaten the Lord's anointed, just to show him that he could. And it's a profound moment where David's integrity stands up and the Lord seems to reward that integrity 
by giving him a season of peace. Well, I hope that, uh, that you delight yourself in the law of the Lord today and that the Lord rewards your integrity and gives you peace as well. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and we thank you for your word. Give us eyes to see the beauty of your story at work. Give us ears to hear your spirit leading us and guiding us as we go into our days. Help us, Father, to take refuge in you, trusting you to be our strong shield and our strength. And Father, help us to delight in your law, to live by your law with humility and justice in a world that is shaken, in a world that is broken, where evil men do horrible things to the innocent and the poor. We pray for your mercy and we pray for your guidance. As people of the living God, help us to stand up for what is right, as David did to declare what is right and to proclaim your name among the nations. And Lord, teach us to worship as David did, rising before dawn with your praise on our lips. Not that the time matters so much, but the enthusiasm certainly does. Lord, give us that enthusiasm. I pray that you would go with each of us today, shielding us with your presence and with your spirit and your delight. Amen. Well, friends, thank you. I hope the rest of your weekend is fantastic. I'm going to miss not being able to see you in person tomorrow for church, but uh, I hope that you enjoy the service that we have prepared for you anyways. We'll miss you, but we'll see you all again soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.